By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zaandam, the Netherlands, for the Zombie Cup number two. We have reached round number four, and in round number four we have two mono black decks going face to face. We have Michel, who's on mono black beta, it's all black bordered, and he's taking on Dedek, who's on a zombie deck. So we've got two mono black decks, but two different strategies as well. Now I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks but before i start with the deck deck i would first like to point out that as always you can also uh, choose to skip this section go to the games first check out the deck decks later i know that some people prefer to do that the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg games if you click on there it'll take you straight to the games and here i'm going to continue with the deck decks i'm going to start with the deck uh, of michelle that's the player on the left let's take a look at his mono black beta brew and here we see the mono black deck of michelle so it's really classical it's all core set that's what i really like about this deck and i believe it's all beta so that's why i've called it obviously mono black beta um so we're seeing kind of the classical black cards right when you think about mono black you've got dark ritual into of course hopefully your hypnotic specter turn one you also have some land disrup uh, disruption with your sinkholes uh, you've got two Sangir vampires i believe there are more Sangirs in the sideboards you've got four terrors and i think it is really cool that he's playing it main because it really like fits that theme of black but i think at this tournament so many people are playing black today <laughs> that I think it's uh, yeah, it's unfortunate uh, to to play with four of these main for the simple reason that you know since you're facing so many black decks, it's really hard to find a target for those terrors. So usually you're going to board those out after uh, the first game. But um, looking at the deck as a whole, I mean it, it looks very strong. It looks very consistent because you know it's it's mono colored. We also have four drain lives in this deck. I think the drain lives. Are really good in a build like this also because you're playing with four dark rituals and of course only with swamps so this drain life can really grant you the victory so i'm curious to see how that's going to work out in this uh, specific matchup um, and then we also have some really nice one-offs in the deck we've got frozen shade that's one of my personal favorites i just love the art and i know it's not that good but i think if you want to play it then you're going to play it in a deck like this in a deck like this it can kind of do some work, right? You want to play mono black regardless. Uh, I think a nightmare would be really nice in this build as well. Talking about cards that would work well here. Um, then also there's that one demonic hordes, super cool, right? So six mana to cast for a five five. You can tap it to destroy target land, and during your upkeep, you have to pay three black, or else the demonic hordes taps itself, and then your opponent can destroy a land on your side of the battlefield. So you don't want that to happen. The nice thing though is because rules kind of changed in Magic, the Demonic Hordes became a little bit better because now if you cannot play uh, pay for the upkeep cost, at least in response, you can tap it and still destroy a land on the side of your opponent. So at least you can do that now. Of course, you still lose the land yourself as well, but then it's one land for one land, so it's not as bad as it kind of used to be. You know, it used to be you have to pay or else you're really screwed. Now in this new, you know, with the new rules, at least you can destroy a land of your opponent. So that's a little bit better. I also like the single Pestilence here in the deck. I think Pestilence is quite good, a little bit underplayed. It's an enchantment, two black and two to cast. And for one black, it deals one damage to each creature and each player. It's as simple as that. And you can do that multiple times. Now, if, if there are no creatures anymore at the end of the turn, then Pestilence destroys itself, right? So that's kind of that clause. But I think it's a really good card and in the right deck it can be really strong and I think also in this deck it can be quite good if you time it right of course because you don't want to kill your own creatures. There are a lot of creatures here with a lower toughness like uh, you know for example that one of Royal Assassin that you see here beautiful black bordered Royal by the way. What a beauty of a card that is. It's really like when I'm looking at this deck, I love it, man. I love the aesthetics. I think it's it's super sweet. Um, anyway, this is the deck of Michel. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, un uh, the Underworld Zombies deck by Dedek. And here we see the zombie deck of Dedek. So Underworld Zombies, named after two cards here. Of course, all the zombies in the deck, the creature type, and the Underworld Dreams. Dreams. We see four Underworld Dreams in this deck now underworld dreams a card we're seeing a lot at this tournament because there's a lot of black uh three black to cast for an enchantment that simply reads every time your opponent draws a card he or she takes a damage and of course those underworld dreams work together really well with the howling minds that are right next to it right so three howling minds in the deck it's quite interesting when i'm looking at this list because 
Um, he's not playing with any Relic Barriers. He is playing with one Black Vice that can work quite well with the Howling Mine, but he's not playing with Sinkhole, for example. So he, he's made a lot of interesting choices. There are a lot of like pretty cool cards actually in this deck. And it's, it's a mix of a lot of strategies because if we look at the zombie section of the deck, we see, of course, four zombie masters, two black and one to cast for this two, three uh, zombie lord that uh, grants all the zombies swamp walk and one black regeneration. This card is often used with cards like Cyclopean Tomb and Evil Presence because then you give your opponent a swamp, your zombies have swamp walk, so they're unblockable and you can win that way. Another strategy that you see often is uh, people play it with Nevenerals Disc, you blow everything up, all your zombies have regeneration, so you don't lose your zombies. So interestingly here is that we don't see Evil Presen Presence or Cyclopean Tomb. I guess at this tournament it doesn't really matter that much because so many players play with, with Swamps, but what if your opponent doesn't? Then it can be quite awkward, you know, you give Swamp Walk to all your creatures, but yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, I guess, I guess though a lot of people splash black as well for Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist, so a lot of decks in old school do have black mana so i can kind of see that work um then we're seeing one neverneural's disc here in the deck so not like a full four or three so it's just kind of a side strategy a sidestep strategy not the main strategy so it's quite interesting i'm i'm, I'm kind of liking this list because there are a lot of one-offs a lot of two-offs so you get a lot of diversity in the game i mean for example there's this force field in there that you're like okay why would the force field be there it's quite interesting i guess Maybe to kind of stop the flying creatures. We also see an Islet of Wakwak, Wak, for example, in the sideboard. So, um, yeah, talking about the sideboard, I mean, Cosmic Horror is in the sideboard. That is absolutely epic. I really hope, Dedek, let me know in the comments below if you've played Cosmic Horror in the, in this tournament and how often. I mean, I love seeing that card in your sideboard. It would be super cool if you could uh, play it as well. Uh, looking at the main again, by the way, we, we do see some, uh, some interesting one-offs, like, for example, the... Um, um, oh, what's it called again? The Oubliette, right? It's called Oubliette, I think. That's that card from uh, Arabian Nights, Enchantment, two black and one, and you can put target creature in the Oubliette and it's considered out of the game. It's exiled until Oubliette leaves the game. So that's quite interesting. One of the things you could do, it's maybe a little bit far-fetched, but use your Oubliette to take a creature of your own, put it out of the game, then pop your disc, destroy the Oubliette, and then, of course, that creature comes back into the game. So it's kind of a way to save a creature as well. It is a bit far-fetched, especially since you probably have uh, regeneration on your zombies anyway, so you don't really have to do that. Talking about popping the disc, there is a card in here that I want to highlight. That's Cabo Ghoul. Cabo Ghoul is a card from Arabian Nights. One black and two to cast for a 1-1 one, one, uh, that reads, on your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on the Cabo Ghoul for each creature that's uh, destroyed this turn, or that, is it destroyed or is it, oh, that died this turn, so it doesn't have to be destroyed. Um, but that's quite interesting, right? Because it means it's got something called a delayed trigger. So um, if you have your Cabo Ghoul in your hand, you can, for example, pop your Nevenerals disc, destroy all the creatures on the board. Let's say there are six creatures died. Then you can play your Cabo Ghoul, and then on the end step of that turn, the Cabo Ghoul will get a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died. So in this example, if six creatures died, it gets... Uh, six plus one plus one counters. It's all of a sudden a seven seven. So a lot of cool stuff can be done with Cabo Ghoul. I mean, think of combining it with Wrath of God, uh, Inferno, Neverneural's Disc, just everything that kind of wipes the board, uh, Hurricane, Earthquake, you know, play it after that, get a huge zo a zombie. I think it's, it's super cool. Okay, this is the deck of Derek. We already looked at the deck of his opponent and that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have our beta, mono black beta player. And on the right, we have the zombie player. So both players playing mono black. Michel here starting with a swamp and then Derek starting with the swamp as well. Having a turn one player in the form of a black vice. So black vice an artifact and is going to deal damage to the opponent for each card above four in hand during the upkeeps. So that means two points of damage. I assume, or did he take a mulligan? Perhaps he did, or is he forgetting to take the damage because then he should go to 18? There is a Maze of If because there was a Black Knight, of course, by Michel, so that Maze can send it back. Now let's go to untap. There is a Swamp. So it looks like he took a Mulligan there, right? Look at that exactly. He only has a few cards in hand, so I guess he took a double Mulligan here. Wow, that is tough. And now there's a maze, so potentially next turn Michel can start attacking. Look at that, only two cards left in hand, so that's why he didn't take any damage from the vice. Wow, that is rough. Well, 
Let's see what uh, Derek can do here. Played out his second swamp. Perhaps he can play, for example, a Walking Dead. It's a zombie for one black and one, and uh, it's a 1-1 one -one from Legends, and you can regenerate it for one black. But no action here from Derek, just a pass turn. Luckily for him, though, he does have that uh, Maze of If. That's kind of saving him here, because you don't want to start discarding cards. So two points of damage here for Derek. Going to drop to 18. He's going to untap, draw a card for turn. Let's see what he can do. Another Swamp. Are we going to see a 3-drop? Maybe a Zombie Master or a Royal Assassin? Those would be good options here for uh, for Derek. Tapping 3. There we see a Zombie Master. So 2-3 Zombie Master. You can see here uh, Derek kind of cheering. Yeah, my Zombie Master. The cool thing here is that the Zombie Master can block the Black Knight because it's got a toughness of 3. So now there's no good attack anymore. For Misha, but look at that tapping five. Oh, there's a drain life on the zombie master. Remember, he's playing with three drain lives, so he's gonna go up to 23. And he can attack. So he can put Derek here on 16. So attacking with both. There's the activation. Sending back, of course, the hypnotic, so he's gonna drop to 16. And untapping for turn here. So, I mean, Derek, of course, does have the card advantage. Look at that Island of Wak Wak. So, I guess he's playing it main. On the picture, it looked like he was playing it in the sideboard, but I guess he's playing it main. There's a Cabal Ghoul, so it's a 1-1. One, one. Unfortunately for Derek, no creatures died this turn, or else it would get a plus one, plus one counter on the end step. But that's not the case. Passing the turn. There we see Michel. Card number six. Attacking with both, so sending one back. And uh, the damage is zero because of the Island of Wak Wak from the Hypnotic Spectre. And if it doesn't deal damage, I don't think it has to discard a card exactly. So that's not happening. Another Black Knight, but now the hand of Michel is empty. They're probably discussing the Hypnotic Spectre. I believe the Hippie has to deal damage because you can play a hip, uh, weakness on the Hypnotic Spectre. And then uh, it's, a, it's an 0-1, and it can just keep attacking you. I've had that once. And then uh, you don't have to discard any cards. It has to deal damage. There's another Swamp. I mean, if he can find the Zombie Master, you would give the Cabo Ghoul Swamp Walk, and he can uh, attack Michel. If he doesn't play anything out, that's a pretty big if. Then Michel can, uh, can attack and deal a little bit of damage probably next turn. And we do see here uh, Derek a little bit in the tank. Maybe he's got a drain life for two that he's thinking about it. Okay, there is an icy manipulator. Okay, so he's t he is tapped out because Island of Wak Wak and Maze of If cannot be tapped for mana, so he cannot use that icy. So that means that next turn Michel can at least deal another two points of damage. The card that would be really good here for Michel to top deck is uh, Demonic Hordes. I mean, he's finding a Swamp instead. So making the Hippie zero, sending back one of the Knights, taking two damage. Gonna drop here to 14. And now he's gonna untap. Draw for turn. Ooh, he does have a uh, Drain Life in hand. But I mean, why would he use it, right? Because now he's got enough answers. Then again, if he if he uses Drain Life, his Cabal Ghoul is going to go up a point. It's going to become a 2-2, which is quite nice. And he can maybe start attacking as well. Here we see a Soul Ring. Now remember, the counter happens at the end step. So if he would, for example, now drain the uh, Black Knight, it wouldn't get a plus one, plus one counter straight away. So he could only attack for one. And here we can see uh, Derek using the IC during the upkeep here of Michel. But I mean, it's looking quite quite good for for Derek. You know, he's got more cards. He's got he's got the situation under control. There's a tap for two. Ooh, is that that's a sinkhole taking care of the island? That is quite nice. There, of course, we see the mace probably on a hippie. He's going to take two more points. From the Black Knight dropping to 12. There we go. Now he's going to untap. Okay. 
So perhaps now Derek has a reason to use that um, that drain life in hand on that hypnotic specter and then attack for one. Or does he have a better option? Flicking through his cards, three cards in hand at the moment. Michel having no cards in hand. And also no card draw in his deck, I believe. So that's kind of tough. Tapping a black. Ooh, dark ritual. What is he going to do with all that mana? So three black mana in the pool from the dark ritual. Tapping one more black, four black in the pool. Okay, there's a drain life. Going to gain two as well. That's a nice thing about the drain life. You gain life and you kill something of your opponent or or take life from your opponent. Drain life, really, really a strong card. And I love that like in design because Fireball, you see that way more often than Drain life. And just because, because of the fact that for Drain life, you need black mana, right? To make it work. So that's quite interesting. So there was a little cut in the recording because Derek had to find his uh, counter, his dice <laughs> for the plus one, plus one counter. But now he's back, so that's good. He's got, probably going to put that on the Cabo Ghoul, right? But at the end step. So, I would first attack, I think. Yeah, passing the turn here. It's actually not attacking. Interesting. I mean, he could have just dealt the damage. So remember, the counter does happen at the end step. So that's just something to remember. The same thing goes, for example, when you play with Rook Egg, the, the Rook... A token, the bird token, the 4-4 four, four flyer comes at the end of the turn. So a lot of players have the tendency, including myself, as soon as the egg's gone, to like slam your 4-4 four, four token on, on the board, but it's it's on the end step. Anyway, there we see uh, an attack here, and of course uh, the Black Knight's being sent back by the Maze of If. So they're kind of uh, steady here on 14. But I think if you're Michel, you're not all that unhappy, you know, because you started with just 5 cards in hand, I believe, right? And you're yeah. doing pretty good. You're on 23, uh, and your opponent's on 14. Yeah. So one card here in hand. And I mean, if, if for example, Michel draws into some more Drain Lives, if he draws into, um, you know, a card like Demonic Hordes, or actually Demonic Hordes would be qu quite a, a, good, a good card to find you. Or just another creature, you know, he can put some more pressure on. And here, of course, we see Derek continuing to tap down the, uh, the Knight. So I believe there's a Terror in hand there. Okay, there's a Juggernaut. Okay, that's kind of nice. Putting some more pressure on. If Dedek can now find a Zombie Master, he can give his Cabal Ghoul regeneration. There's another Swamp and just a pass though. Or not. Yep, just a pass. And I guess he's now going to uh, tap down the Juggernaut. Michel drawing for turn, another Swamp, so there is a Terror in hand, so that card's kind of useless. A card, of course, that he is going to board out after the first game. Sending back a Knight, taking two damage, going to go to 12. And the Juggernaut's going to die, of course, because if it cannot attack, it destroys itself, so this is really good news for the Cabo Ghoul. So it's now a 3-3. Three, three. That's nice because it means it can start blocking the Black Knights and also it can now attack. Maybe that's even more important and, and, and there it can start putting some pressure on Michel's life total. Yeah. And I'm just now looking at the amount of swamps on the side of Michel. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine swamps. He still has three drain lives in his deck, so he can now play a drain life for seven. That would put Derek on five. There's the attack, so he's going to take 3 damage, going to drop down to 20, I assume. So there he goes, back down to 20. Now taking on his turn, again tapping down a knight. Is that another juggernaut there? Sending it back. Just a pass here. 
Unique ability, man. Unique ability. Dedic here drawing a card for turn three cards in hand. I wonder what those cards are. Ooh, there's a Chaos Orb. Activating the Chaos Orb. And he's gonna flip on one of the knights. I think I would, I, maybe I would have waited with this flip because I mean, you've got answers. Oh, it's a miss. Ah! Oh. <laughs> in Dedek's defense, I think it's important to know, you know, before people go crazy in the comments. This is played, this is round number four. We've been magicking the whole day. Um, you can see a beer there on the table. We're just having lots of fun. So flipping gets harder as uh, as the day gets longer, if you know what I mean. Anyway, there's a pass here by Dedek. But it would have been really good if he would have like hit here with the, uh, with the flip, because then the knight would have been gone and the ghoul would have been uh, a 4-4 at the end of turn. There was an attack, uh, by the way, by Dedek, so he's now on 17. Ooh, there's a dark ritual. Are we going to see a huge drain life? And is that big enough? Okay, there's a drain life. So one, two, three, four, five, six. A drain life for 10, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So then he would drop to two. So both players counting up here. Who is it? The drain life for 11 even. Wow. Okay, it is a drain life for 10, so I was correct here. So he's now on two. That also means that, of course, Michel is gaining 10. I mean, drain life, when you think about it, it's a sick card, right? The fact that it works both ways makes it so good in these mono black decks. And now all of a sudden, like, the victory is quite close for Michel. If he can just top deck another drain life, there's still two in his deck. I mean, it's kind of the only road to victory, though, because... You know, he doesn't have a lot a lot of other things going for him. You know, he's got a Terra in hand that he can't use. And Derek, of course, having any IC and a double mace. So he's not there yet. I think if you're Derek, okay, this is actually great. Maze and Royal Assassin classic combo. So Michel just has one out here that's drawing into the drain life. That's it. <laughs> I mean, for the rest, he's really toast. But don't you love the situation here on the board? You've got IC Manipulator, Royal Assassin. And that Cabo Ghoul, those three together, I mean, they make an amazing, um, you know, an amazing combination of cards. Here we see a Mind Twist, so Michel yeah. getting rid of that one Terror, that doesn't really matter much. And yeah, I mean, Derek is in a great position. The only problem here is the fact that he's on two. There's another Swamp. And I mean, on one hand, you could say maybe Michel should have waited with the Drain Life. But then again, you now see, you know, uh, Derek finding that mind twist, twisting the head. If he would have waited, he would have lost the drain life then and there. And that would have been uh, the end of the story. And here we see Derek using that royal on the uh, the Black Knight. And attacking with the Gobble Ghoul, dealing three points of damage. And of course, he's going to get a counter on his end step. So, I mean, you know, Derek just has to mow down the knights and start attacking with the ghoul. Tapping down, passing the turn. There's another Black Knight, though. And I understand the strategy here by uh, Michel, because you just want to start, keep playing out creatures, making it as, as difficult as possible for, uh, for Derek here. And Derek, of course, killing the other Black Knight. So one Black Knight on board, tapping three. Are we going to see another creature? There's a Zombie Master. So now it's got Swamp Walk. It's unblockable. And now it's going to attack here, dealing four points of damage. And now it's going to go fasty for Michel. On Ansep getting another counter. So now it's a 5-5 Gobble Ghoul with Swamp Walk and Regeneration. I mean, that's one serious, angry zombie <laughs> that you got to deal with. Michel really needs to find, like, a Demonic Tutor or one of his two Drain Lives. That is important here for Michel. I mean, he's on 19 life still. Okay, so it's, it's, that's something at least. But it's going to go really fast. I mean, that ghoul is going to keep growing and growing and growing. And he can, of course, also attack now with the zombie master. So he can, he can swing in for 7 this turn. 
So that means he's on a three turn clock at the moment. He's gonna kill, of course, the last knight on the side of Michel. There's another attack for seven. So he's gonna drop even further down. He's on 12, two more turns to go. Ay, 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 it's looking really bad for Michel. I thought after that drain life, I thought he was in a good space, but it looks like he is gonna lose though. Tapping the table, knowing that he needs that card. Drain life or bust. Yes. And of course he's gonna tap it down. Tapping down the Hypnotic Spectre. And it's not dead yet. Yeah, now he's gonna kill it. But remember he's doing it in his own turn because the Royal was still tapped. And I think Michel is saying you can put a counter on it, but that's not true because the Royal Assassin was tapped. So a little mistake here, but I don't think it has really a big influence. He can attack you for 10. Oh, Demonic Tutor, so he can finish it right now, I believe. Could just go for a Drain Life, drain those last points. And that should be the end here. So Dedek here shuffling up. Ooh, he's actually changing his mind. I wonder what that card is. I can't really see it. Maybe he's realizing, oh, wait a minute. I can actually win the game or I want, oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's getting the drain life now. Because he can swing in here for 10, put him on two and play drain life for two, win the game. Or maybe if he wants to finish him off with the Gobble Ghoul, he can first play the drain life. But I mean, it is, it is cool to think that if Michel would have found the Demonic Tutor instead of Derek here, then Michel would have won the game, despite the fact that he started with five cards and that he was quite unlucky. So here we see Derek counting. The zombies are gonna win this one. Here we see the Drain Life, that's step number one. Drain Life four, how much is it? One, two, three, four. Drain Life for six or seven, I believe. Doesn't really matter. If it's for seven, he would drop down to five. He would go back up to nine. Then he can start attacking. But of course, he also played out the Demonic Tutor. Oh yeah, of course. So I've got to take that into account. So it's a drain life for six. So he's going to drop to six, I believe. Or not. You know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's... He's done anyway, so there's the attack. Yeah. It's the end of the road, or or does he have anything? Oh, yeah. Nope, he does not. Looking at the top card, wasn't a, a drain life, so that's it. Game number one, one here by the zombie deck. Both of these players are going to sideboard. I guess Michel is going to drop those terrors from his main deck. Gonna put something more useful in, and the same goes probably for, uh, for Dedek here. And then we're going to catch up with these uh, players in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Dedek. That means Michel is on the play. And let's just hope that he can keep the seven cards right. That will be a good starting point for him. And maybe, you know, he's going to have a good turn one. Ooh, look at that opener. We've got again a Black Vice, which is not great when you're on the draw. And we've got a Soul Ring and a Walking Dead. There's a pass. So Michel having some swamps here. Only two, though. But there's also a Demonic Tutor, I believe, in hand for him. So that's quite good. Here we're probably gonna see the soul ring exactly and tapping it down here for oh not the vice. Nope. But a chaos orb. Didn't see that chaos orb. So that's quite nice. And here we go. Mm -hmm. There is a demonic tutor. I wonder if you're Dedek. Do you wanna flip on a land? Maybe you wanna wait. Of course, he doesn't know that um that Michel doesn't have any uh any more lands in hand. I wonder if he's gonna go here maybe for a soul ring. Is there a soul ring in his deck actually? I'm trying to remember the deck photo. I'm not quite sure if there is. The hard thing here for, for Michel is like, I get it that he plays a demonic tutor now he should, you know, but then what to go for? Because you're, you're low on lands. Are you gonna go for a basic swamp? Are you gonna go for a dark ritual? Are you gonna go for a soul ring if it's in there? Or are you gonna go for something else? Looks like he went for a swamp, which kind of makes sense because his hand is full of like three drops. So he can start playing out those Hypnotic Spectres. And when he then, if if he plays out Hypnotic Spectre and Derek flips on the Spectre, he also has an anime dead. So that would actually be really a nice scenario 
for Michel to happen. Ooh, this is unfortunate. The strip mine is not good for Michel. That is very unfortunate. There's a Walking Dead and a Vice. Yeah, this is very unfortunate here. You know, being low on lands, having this Vice situation going. I mean, this is not Michel's match. I kind of hope, okay, there is a card from the sideboard. Like, his sideboard cards are wide board. This is quite easy to see. So, that's a Nevenerals disc from the sideboard. Actually, quite good right now, but he just doesn't have the mana. This is so unfortunate. If, um, if Derek wouldn't have had the strip mine, he could have played out the hippie, you know, and then maybe there would have been that scenario that I just described where, where Derek would flip on the hypnotic and he could use his animate. But. I mean, this is really bad. He's taking damage and not finding any lands. Oh, man. I'm kind of feeling for Michel here because this is his deck is better than what we see right now in this matchup. So Derek attacking again. So I think he's going to drop here. I forgot to take damage from the Vice. I think that's what they're talking about now. So should have taken some damage, I believe. Exactly. So... Takes the damage, gonna go down to 16, or not. I mean, I don't know what these players uh, have agreed upon. Anyway, there's a button now on the top of the deck to remind yourself of the trigger. Tapping three black. Oh, and Underworld Dreams make matters even worse. Oh, talking about making matters worse, there's a Howling Mine as well, wow. I mean, the Howling Mine actually isn't the worst because y you gotta draw out of this anyway. You gotta find lands if you wanna do something. So he's going to drop now to uh, to 13. Okay, okay. So he calculated how much damage he should still get. Anyway, he ends up on 11. Oh, that's of course because of the um, the trigger from the uh, from the Underworld Dreams drawing two cards. Okay, that kind of makes sense. At least the Dreams is making it so, or the Howling Mind is making it so that he can find some lands now playing something out. There's the Hypnotic Spectre, which could be a blocker here for the Walking Dead. I wonder if... Derek is going to flip here on the Hypnotic Spectre. Another line could be maybe a Paralyze. I know those are in this deck as well. Yeah, he's going to flip here. Ooh, and remember, he missed a flip in game one. Is he going to hit it now? Yep, he is. Oh, look at him. He's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> this was a really great tournament, by the way. We just had a lot of fun. Just great guys in Zandam, great event. You know, we were we were drinking beer and 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 just just talking nonsense the whole day. It was it was great, and of course playing cards. But we just had a lot of fun. Ooh, there is a paralyzed. The problem here is the life total. Look at him go five. He's on five. He's like so losing this. I mean, he does have. What he could do here is play a weakness on the Walking Dead and play a Drain Life for one. Kind of go up in life and he's got another Drain Life in hand. Actually, his, his hand is not bad. The problem is he's dying. That's the problem. Yes. Because he's emptying his hand, but it's not enough though. Does he still have seven cards? Six, I believe. Choosing not to untap the Walking Dead. But if he has six in hand, he's going to take two, going to go to three, going to draw two, going to go to one. And he need that. Uh, it's so bad. If he would have had a little bit more life, he could have played the Nevenerals disc and kind of make it make it work. And here we see him block the, uh, the factory worker. That makes sense, of course. I hope that there's not going to be more pressure. So he's going to go to three. Gonna draw two cards, gonna go to one. <laughs> He's on one. I mean, he can drain life for two and then play that weakness for one on the walking dead. Because if he if he only drain lives for three and then let let Derek untap, then he's got an extra card in hand and he's gonna take a damage. So I think Can he survive this? I don't think he can. Because even if he goes to three, I believe he still has too many cards in hand as well. But let's let's see how far he goes. Okay, there's a weakness. Taking out the Walking Dead. So that's something. Then we're probably going to see that Drain Life, right? Okay, there's a Drain Life. 
So he's going up to three. And now what? How many cards he has in hand? Five? Oh, man. Is that five cards in hand, Michelle? Really? Oh, that sucks. That really does. Or, yeah, it's five, I believe. So he's going to die regardless because he's going to take two from the dreams and one from the vice. First one from the vice, then two from the dreams, but he's on three. Yeah, there's a disc. Doesn't matter. Now let's let's have a look. Maybe. I mean, is there anything he can do? Nope, right? He's going to die. While the trigger's on the stack, he could play something. And oh, out. no, no, because he's going to draw it anyway. It is. It is what it is. He's um. He's not winning it here. He's actually losing with zero two. So, but it's good for the zombie deck. So, congratulations, Derek, winning here with Underworld Zombies. But I was hoping to get a third game in. I think that beta deck. I mean, there's so many sweet cards in here that we haven't seen yet, but it is what it is. This is how it goes sometimes. Dedek winning here. Congratulations. And if you've enjoyed this match, I have good news for you because Dedek is back next week. He's going to play in round number five as well. And then he's going to take on me, my Goblin Bowl deck. Here you can see the picture of both of these decks. So this is what you can expect next week. And I'm actually doing really well at this tournament. I've won all my matches thus far, but now, of course, I've got to play against the Zombie Maestro, so that's going to be a really exciting match. Looking forward to showing that to you next week. Now, if you want to make sure that you don't miss any updates here on Timmy Talks, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you're already a sub, thank you so much for supporting the show. Please leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing you can do to support the show, and that is become a patron. And you can do that via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. The cool thing is if you become a patron of the show, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You also can uh, join all the online events that I organize, all the tournaments and stuff. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.